Hey there, Pathless Peddlers. In this video, I'm gonna talk about something near and dear to my heart, and that's photography. Lots of longtime followers know that I've been a working photographer and now videographer for the last decade. So in this video, I wanna give you my top five tips from a decade of shooting from the bicycle and shooting bikes. So welcome back if you're a subscriber, if you're new to the channel, if you're into bicycles, bike touring, camera gear, fly fishing, you know, all the good things in life, then be sure to give the channel a subscribe. So let's jump right in. For the last 10 years, I've been making a living as a photographer and now as a videographer. Before we sold everything on our big bike tour, I did a lot of portrait work, uh, food photography, all by cargo bicycle. And that's where I really cut my teeth on photography in general, but also in learning how to carry all sorts of different camera gear. In 2009, when we sold everything, I pared down that kit and my photography really shifted from kind of this general portrait and food to specifically bike touring and adventure travel. So since 2009, almost all my work has been really focused on bike touring, bike travel, and we've been fortunate enough to work with different bike magazines like Adventure Cycling, Bicycle Times, Momentum, I've also been fortunate to work with a number of bicycle brands. So in this video, I wanted to condense um, everything we've learned into kind of five simple lessons. So hopefully you'll learn from some of the mistakes I've made, some of the hard-earned lessons, and that it'll help elevate your bicycle touring and travel photography. So tip number one, beyond sensor size, high ISO, and all the techie stuff that we love about cameras, uh, the most important thing, I think, in bicycle touring photography and travel photography in general is having a camera that's easily accessible. You can shoot with the most amazing camera ever, but if it takes you, you know, five minutes or even a minute to access that camera, you're probably not gonna shoot very often. And if you don't shoot very often, you're not gonna, you're not gonna come away with those awesome images. With us, when we first set off, I was carrying a full frame Nikon uh, with a whole bevy of lenses and even traveled with a whole light kit, two light stands, a couple pocket wizards, some strobes, a softbox, an umbrella. It was crazy. So actually for the last like six years, I got rid of all my Nikon gear and I've switched exclusively to mirrorless cameras. Because the cameras are smaller and lighter, you know, I can ride around uh, with the camera bandolier style longer and therefore take more photos. And that's really the key here. If you've got a camera that, that's buried in the bag or buried in the pannier and you have to dig it out, I mean, it may take a minute in that instant, but over the length of a bike tour or over the length of a trip, you know, those minutes add up. Before you go down the rabbit hole of megapixels, your main priority, especially if you have to travel light and move fast, is having a camera that's accessible and easy to operate. So takeaway number two is you never get a second chance to shoot that picture. The slightest inkling that you wanna make this picture happen, then definitely shoot it at that moment. There have been times when we've been on tour and there's this cool bend in the road and I've been thinking, hey, you know, that would make an awesome picture, but I'm too tired. You know, I'll shoot that when we double back on it. And you know what happens? I don't do it or the light's different. And what was a beautiful photo at that moment uh, is no longer. And you know, there's that saying that you never stand in the same river twice. And that is so true of photography and especially travel photography when you're constantly moving. Okay, so takeaway number three is that good pictures are made and made is the key word. Initially, I was really influenced by street photography, you know, Brisson's idea of the decisive moment that you just happened upon a moment and bam, you take a picture and it's amazing. Uh, kind of like finding a $20 bill on the ground. But how often does that happen? Uh, over the years, I've realized that many times, actually most of the time, good photos are made. I know this kind of takes away the, the romance of um, kind of the, the art of photography, but having worked as a commercial photographer or, or working as a commercial photographer, I know that I can't wait for that moment to kind of magically come together, that I have to you know, influence uh, the scene sometimes to make that perfect picture. So how that applies to bike touring is that there's definitely times where we're going up a hill or down a hill and there's just a spectacular vista. You know, I'll stop and tell Laura, hey, do you mind, you know, riding down about, you know, a third of the way of the, down the hill and then pedaling back up? Or, you know, if she's feeling tired, then I'll hand her the camera set up and I'll do the climb, you know, once or twice. Photography, although it happens in an instant, is actually a lot 
more like sculpture. You know, you add elements, take elements, move things around until you get that perfect image. So the fourth point is that a really spectacular photo, one that stands out, you don't shoot with a photographer's eye, so to speak. It's not as cut and dry as having perfect composition, rule of thirds, I mean, a good exposure, all that kind of technical stuff. But a good photo, you actually shoot from your heart. And this is kind of a, a tough thing to convey and to understand. But there are moments when, you know, we're riding along or we're interacting with people that I feel like, I feel that little tug on my heartstring and that's when I know that I want to take the photograph. I feel those make uh, the most powerful images rather than perfectly compose something according to all the photographic rules. So for me, the most powerful photos are the photos that start from a place of empathy. You know, when you're feeling something, so you have something that you can communicate and make other people feel as well. And that leads perfectly to tip number five, uh, probably the most important. You want your photographs to tell a story. Now we're inundated constantly with pretty pictures, you know, pretty pictures of bikes against walls, bikes in the forest, all that stuff. And they're pretty to look at, but you know, at the end of the day, they all kind of blur together because they don't communicate anything other than like, oh, this thing is a pretty object. The most memorable photos that I see are the ones that communicate a story. So there's got to be some kind of motivating action or some interesting juxtaposition so that when a viewer sees a photo, it's not just this instantaneous hit and that's it. That there's got to be something in it that has like a kind of quiet unraveling. And the more you look at the photo, the more you appreciate it. So a great photograph should be like a great short story or a haiku. And telling a good story through your stills, that could be anything from the story of man versus nature, you know, man versus man. Man versus himself, you know, I was a literature major, so we studied kind of all these kind of basic elements of, you know, what creates a good narrative. So take, for example, you want to uh, emphasize the aloneness or solitary experience of, that you're feeling, uh, you know, shooting from the heart while, on, while you're on bike tour. You know, how do you do that? One quick way is to not just shoot the, the landscape, but to put yourself or put a cyclist in that picture. You know, shoot it wide, you know, show that vast expanse of the landscape you know, try to get the cyclists in silhouette. So really think about what it is that you're feeling at that moment, what, it, what feeling it is you want to communicate and what the narrative is, and then kind of the compositional elements to kind of support that narrative, that emotion, that feeling that you're trying to share with the viewer. And I know this sounds like all really heady stuff and it's hard to apply to every single photograph. I certainly don't do it. Sometimes I just want to take a pretty picture. But also I know that whenever we go on the tour, or whenever we go out on a shoot, I try to think of what's uh, the quintessence, the, the quintessential experience uh, that I want the viewer to feel. All right, whew, that was some heady stuff. So those are kind of my five big picture, big takeaways from the last 10 years of doing photography and, and in particular, uh, bicycle touring and travel photography. No, I didn't get into f-stops and what have you. Maybe I'll make more technical videos, but I feel like there's tons of technical videos out there, but very few videos I feel that kind of address the philosophical and psychological element of, of bike touring photography and, and travel photography. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I, it, it didn't get too long. If you have specific questions or if you want me to delve into other kind of photographic issues into more depth, definitely let me know in the comments below. We try to be really responsive. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more bike touring, fly fishing, camera photography talk content, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.